let's explore more about our magnifying glass. In fact, we'll play with our magnifying glass in this video. What we'll do is we'll see what happens when an object comes too close or goes too far away from a magnifying glass. Now before we begin, we've already seen how a magnifying glass works in a previous video. So let's quickly summarize the key takeaways that we'll be requiring in this video. For a naked eye, the biggest sharp image in the retina is formed when the object is kept right at the near point and that angle that is subtended is given as the height of the object divided by the near point distance. If we go any closer, then the angle increases and the image size increases, but it gets blurred. And so, we made use of a magnifying glass and went closer to it. We made sure our object was right at the principal focus of our magnifying glass, and as a result, the image became bigger. But more importantly, the rays of light after refraction through the lens became parallel on our eyes, and as a result, our eyes could be in the most relaxed state and could still easily focus it. And as a result, we got not only big, but sharp image. And so the new angle subtended is this, using the same formula, h divided by the new distance, that's the focal length. And so now if we compare the height of the image in the retina here to what we have over here, that's pretty much the same as the ratio of the angle subtended here to the angle subtended here. Just think about this for a while. So we defined our magnification as angular magnification as the ratio of the two angles, because that itself is the ratio of the two heights, and that, if you substitute, we got as d divided by f. Now, if you need more clarity on this, it would be a great idea to go back and watch that video and then come back over here. All right, let's work with some numbers. Let's say the focal length of our lens was about 10 centimeters. Then, the magnification that we would get would be approximately, approximately, uh, D, the near point distance is about 25 centimeters, that's what we'll take, 25 centimeters, divide by the focal length is about 10 centimeters, that's our example, then this number turns out to be 2.5. What does that mean? Well, this means that the, that the height of the image in the retina over here is about two and a half times more than what we would get over here. So we would say the magnification or the magnifying power of our microscope is 2.5. And remember, in this position, because the rays of light falling on our eyes are parallel to each other, our eyes are in their most relaxed state. So we're not only getting 2.5 times magnification, but our eyes are relaxed. So eyes are relaxed. All right, now let's play with this. What do you think will happen if we keep our object farther away than the principal focus? So let's draw one more diagram. So let's pull this object a little bit farther away and see what's going to happen. Well, let's think about these rays of light. Well, this blue ray, well, that will remain the same because it's still parallel to the principal axis, so that ray will remain the same. But this orange ray will change because that orange ray has to start from here and it has to go through the optic center. We're assuming that the optic center is right over here, okay? Through the optic center. So I want you to pause the video and just think about what's going to happen. More importantly, just think, how will these rays of light be now when they're falling on our eyes? And based on that, just think about what might happen. All right, let's draw them. So nothing happens to the blue ray, it remains the same, but the orange ray, I have to pull it back now because it has to start from the top and it has to pass through the optic center, that's over here, so we have to turn it upwards a little bit. There it is, it has to pass through the optic center. Excellent. Now, notice what's happening to the rays of light falling on our eyes. Well, earlier they were parallel, but now, since this orange ray bent upwards, can you see the two rays have become convergent? And when converging rays are falling on your eyes, they get focused in front of the retina, as you can see over here. Well, we might be curious as to why can't our eyes adjust itself to make sure these rays of light are focused further away onto the retina. Well, think of it this way. In order to focus it further away, it has to increase its focal length, isn't it? but our eyes are in the most relaxed state. Its focal length cannot increase anymore. This is the maximum focal length it has. And as a result, there's nothing your eye can do to focus it on our retina. And as a result, we'll end up with blurred images. So long story short, while using a magnifying glass, if objects are outside the focal length, they will all look blurred to you. All right, let's bring it back to the principal focus and ask the question, what happens if we bring the object closer than the principal focus? Again, good time to pause the video and think about this. We'll follow the same steps. 
First thing, the blue ray is gonna remain exactly the same. Nothing will happen to it. The orange ray has to be adjusted because it has to start from here and it has to pass through the optic center. Again, think about what will happen to the rays of light falling onto our eyes. Initially, it was parallel. Right now, it is parallel. What do you think will happen? And then think about what will happen to the image size and whether the image will be formed on the retina or not. All right, let's see. Again, nothing happens to the blue ray, but the orange ray has to be adjusted. It has to start from here, and it has to pass through the optic center, so it has to be bent downwards. It has to bend downwards, and as a result, notice the rays of light incident on our eyes are now diverging, because initially they were parallel. Now this yellow ray bent downwards, so it became diverging. And as a result, can you see the rays of light are no longer being focused on the retina, they are being focused behind the retina. Now the question is, can our eyes adjust itself to bring these two rays to focus a little bit closer onto the retina? And the answer is yes, because to focus it a little bit closer, it has to decrease its focal length. And remember, our eyes were in the relaxed state, it had the maximum focal length. The focal length can be reduced, all right? But this is a little bit more involved. Can it be reduced enough to bring it to focus onto the retina? That's the big question. How do we get the answer to this? The answer is, we will backtrack these rays and see where they appear to be coming from. So let's just backtrace them. Well, notice if we backtrace these rays, they appear to be coming from, originating from somewhere, I know maybe they, I did not draw the whole thing, but originating from somewhere over here. And here's the good news. As long as the rays of light appear to be originating from outside the near point, they can be focused onto our retina. So this is the clue. This, this tells us that our eyes can reduce the focal length enough and bend this ray downwards to focus it right onto the retina. And as a result, can you see that, the, that this point is being focused down over here? And as a result, the image size in the retina will increase, meaning the magnification produced now becomes higher than 2.5. Can you see that? So the takeaway is if you bring the object closer than the principal focus, the magnification increases. Well, why stop there? Let's bring the object further closer, then the magnification will further increase, isn't it? Well, if we redraw the ray diagram, Again, the orange ray has to bend now more downwards because it has to pass through the optic center. Notice now the rays of light which are falling on our eyes appear to be coming from somewhere here, right at our near point, which means our eyes can still focus it, can still reduce the focal length and can still bring it to focus onto the retina. But if you bring the object any closer, then you will see that the two rays will now appear to originate from inside the near point. And once they start originating from inside the near point, our eyes cannot bring them to focus. We've already seen that. And as a result, this is the limit. So whatever magnification we're getting over here is the maximum magnification. If you bring it further closer, again, the image will be blurred. And so now the big question, and this is the last thing, okay? The big question is, what is the new magnification? What is the maximum magnification that we're getting in this case? Well, how do we calculate that? Well, we can do the same thing over here. All we need to do is figure out what this angle is. Let's call, give that angle a name. Let's call that angle as theta, theta two. And that angle is the same as this angle, which is also theta two. And that angle theta two is again, we can use the same formula, is approximately the height divided by this distance. And so the big question now is what is that distance? That is no longer the focal length, that is less than the focal length. So let's call the distance as x, and the goal is to figure out what x is, because once we get this, we can calculate what this new angle is, and the ratio of this angle to what we had before for our naked eye would be our new magnification. So I want you to pause the video now one more time and see if you can figure out how to calculate this x. And here's the clue. This is actually a problem on lenses. You see, what we need to calculate is the object distance. What we already know is the focal length. Focal length is already given to us as 10, taking that as an example. And we already also know what the image distance is. Notice after refraction, we want the rays of light to appear to start from the near point, because that's the limit, right? So we also know the image distance is about 25 centimeters. 
So we know the image distance, we know the focal length, we have to calculate the object distance. We can use the lens formula to do that. So pause the video and see if you can try this yourself now. All right, let's do this. This is the last thing, this last piece of calculation we'll do. So we'll do that, we'll make some space over here. Excellent. So all we have to do is use the lens formula. The lens formula is one over F is one over V minus one over U. Let's substitute. And we have to use sign conventions. We are always going to choose the incident direction as positive. So this is positive. So let's substitute with sign conventions. What is the focal length? Focal length is 10 centimeters. And we are considering the focal length on the right because the incident rays are this way and so the focal length is towards the right. That's positive, so one over plus 10 equals one over V. We know the image distance. The image distance is the near point, right? And, but that's on the left side and so that's negative. So that's minus 25 plus, or sorry, minus minus one over the object distance. So what's the object distance? That's x. Let's just put that as x. And we can now solve this. And I don't want to solve it. I want you to try and solve this if you have not already. And if you solve it, you'll find x equals minus 50 by seven. You just have to do the algebra. I'm pretty sure you can do it, all right? And the minus sign is just telling us that the object has to be kept on the left side according to our sign conventions. We don't care about that minus sign. All we need is that is that number, right? And so from this, we can now figure out what theta two is. Theta two, that is this angle, is the height h, height h, divided by this distance, which is 50 by seven. I'll forget about the minus sign. 50 by seven, so 50 divided by seven, that seven can come on the top now. And as a result, our new magnification, our new magnification, the definition is the same. The magnification is going to be this new angle that we're getting, theta two, divided by what we had before, theta naught. We're always going to compare with the naked eye to figure out how much magnification we're getting, right? So theta naught, and that is equal to, theta two we already know is seven h, seven h divided by 50, divided by, it's a little, getting a little bit crowded, theta naught, what is theta naught? Theta naught, was h divided by 25, right? For the naked eye, the object was over here. So it is h divided by 25. The h, the h cancels. 25 goes two times. So you get seven over two. That is 3.5, 3.5. And that is our maximum, maximum magnification that our lens can give us, all right? So the minimum magnification was 2.5 and our eyes were relaxed. But now our eyes are stressed. Why? Because the rays of light are coming from the near point. So our eyes are using their maximum power so they are stressed. So over here, our eyes are stressed. Phew, so this was a lot to digest. So the key takeaway of all of this is when you're using a magnifying glass, there is a certain range of distances within which you should keep your object. The maximum distance is the principal focus, and that's when you get the minimum magnification because that's the farthest away, minimum magnification, but your eyes are relaxed. And the minimum distance, is there is, there is some minimum distance to which you can bring your object close to. And that's when you get the maximum magnification, but your eyes are stressed. And also an interesting thing you can note is that the mag maximum magnification is one more than the minimum magnification, isn't it? This turns out to be true in general. You can check that. So I always like to remember that the minimum magnification is just d by f, and the maximum magnification is d by f plus one. And if you keep your objects outside of those ranges, too close or too far away, then the image will just be blurred. All right, let's end with a demo. We can see some action figures over here. The ones behind are clearly visible, but Batman, who's so close to us, well, is not in focus because his image is not being focused on our retina. But if we make use of a convex lens, boom, Batman is the only one now in focus. Why? Because it's Batman. Well, more importantly, because Batman is now within that range that we discussed, and all the other action figures are outside the focal length, and therefore, they are not very clear. On a side note, you can see this is a beautiful picture where you have the main subject in focus and everything else in the background blurred. This is how those DSLR pictures or portrait mode pictures are taken. So a bonus, we also understood the technology that our cameras use to come up with these beautiful photos.